So the next step in occluso equilibration, once we've uh, <coughs> milled in the centric occlusion, is to do uh, working and balancing and vertrusive. So just a little a recap on the centric. Um, I got my all of my posterior teeth to come into contact. And I'm just going to remove the pin. But before I do that, I just want to show you that the pin is back to negative 0.5. That was the vertical dimension that I had uh, after the setup and wax up. So I was able to close the pin down to where it was before. Granted, the original pin placement was at zero, so therefore, I've lost half a millimeter of vertical dimension, which means if this was a real case, this particular patient would have, instead of having three millimeters of freeway space, now they have three and a half, within reason. Okay, it's still within the norm of two to four, so it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next step, and that is to equilibrate the case through selective grinding and lateral excursions. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our condylar in inclination here is still at 25 that we had before on each side. The Bennett angle is at 15, and everything is nice and snug on the back of the articulator, depending on the one that you're using. And at this point, I'm just gonna visually assess the case to see how everything balances before we do any selective grinding. So I'm just gonna release one centric latch here. And I'm gonna move my articulator one side. Doesn't matter which side you start off with. So right there, I've noticed a bit of an incisal opening between 1-1 one, one and 4-1 one and 3-1. There is adequate posterior contact, mostly between 1-6 and 1-7, but not so much between 1-4 one, and 1-5. One, and the balancing on the left side is open by a good half a millimeter. So all roads point to this area here. This is my premature contact. You can certainly turn the case and look at it on the inside and surely enough, I'm not sure if it shows up in, on camera, but I have lingual interference between the maxillary lingual cusps and the, and the lower lingual cusps. So if we follow our rule, our bull rule, which means if we're gonna reduce anything, we're gonna start reducing the lingual cusps of the lower and or the buccal uh, inclines of the upper, okay? So I'm gonna start off by inserting my articulating paper. Certainly you can do one quadrant at a time, but I'm gonna do Maybe I'll get a much wider piece, and I'll do two teeth at a time. I don't want to do the whole thing. So I'm going to place some articulating paper between the molars on one side, and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure with my left hand and just squeeze the articulator together somewhat, and I'll shift my articulator over to the right working. And see what comes up. And I'll move it between the fours now. Squeeze it together. And bring it over. I certainly feel some interference there. I don't have a smooth transition of the articulator moving back and forth. So let's see what we have here. I can certainly put some articulator, articulating paper on the balancing side, but because of the fact that I don't have visually have any contacts here, I'm not gonna bother at this time, but certainly when I get this 
working side to close a little bit better, I'm going to start checking the balancing side as well. So let's open it and see what we have. So here we go, we have lingual interference of the lower lingual cusps right here. So that pretty much in line with our bull rule. So lingual lower inclines and buckle upper inclines. So we're gonna do this in small increments. And when you use your burr, try to hold your burr at an angle so it follows the angle of the incline that you're trying to reduce. A little bit here, mostly back here. And the buckle inclines of the upper. Try to work around the cusp tip as much as you can because if you reduce the cusp tips excessively on the uppers, it will affect the aesthetics of the plane of occlusion. So I'm gonna wipe everything down again. And this time I'm gonna use just alcohol for my alcohol torch. I think it's a little bit cleaner. Bring the case back together. Hold it together and then shift it over. And definitely now the shift is a whole lot smoother. The incisal ledges, as they appear, they're a little bit closer. They're not there yet. And the balancing side looks a little closer together. So I got a little ways to go. <clears throat> so once again, just put it between the molars initially. Put a little bit of pressure. So I'm actually squeezing the case together now. Move it up a bit. Clamp it together with your hands and do that same movement. I'm just gonna do a, a visual check here. My balancing is not together still, so there's no point of placing the articulating paper over here. So let's open it up again. So I have a lingual interference on the incline here. Remember, I don't wanna redu reduce these cusps here. These are the centric holding cusps on the opposing, lingual on the uppers and buckle on the lowers. So we're gonna follow our bull rule. And if anything, you can work around the buckle lingual cusp by just rounding it off. But I'm not really trying to reduce it. I'm just ever so slightly rounding off that cusp. Okay, let's check it again visually. Definitely it's smoother. That shift now is a whole lot smoother. We're not there yet, so I still need to reduce it some more. Clean it off. Now I'll get a paper that's a little bit <clears throat> narrower than the other one, and I'll do it one tooth at a time. Place it in between each tooth, so between one seven, one six, and so on. and see what we have. So definitely there's a more interference here. There's a definite premature contact way back here. Lingual of the four seven, so I'm gonna reduce that. And as far as the upper is concerned, again, at the sevens. I'm working around the buckle cusp tips to maintain their height, otherwise 
I will affect the plane of occlusion, at least the aesthetic aspect, looking at it from, from the front. Close it and check it some more. <clears throat> now let's see. <clears throat> so we have the bicuspids coming a little closer together. The incisal ledges now are much closer together. And the balancing is starting to have some contact. So we're getting closer. Just, it's important to apply a little bit of pressure between the two halves of the articulator because otherwise you won't get any of the paper to leave an imprint. And now I'm going to move a little bit further interiorly and also include the incisal edges because I anticipate some contact there, possibly. And for good measure, I'm going to move to the balancing side and go through the motions again to see if there indeed there is any contact between upper and lower posterior teeth for the left balancing. So I'm getting some and definitely getting some more working contacts. So I'll start with the lower again. And reduce a little more on this buckle. Incline of the one seven, distal buckle incline of the one six, and a little bit on the lingual incisal of the 1-2, and now we're getting a little bit on the lingual incisal edge of the 1-1. One, one. It's important to trim it at an angle as to not reduce the overall height of the tooth. And on the lower, we have a little bit here. So in this particular case, I'm gonna reduce the facial incisal aspect a little bit, and on the Four, three, same way. So the angle of my burr is as, is as such. It's not directly on top. It's coming at an angle. And on the upper, it's coming at an angle inside here, not directly vertically. I'm going to further round off these buckle cusp tips because I'm getting awfully close in reducing the maxillary buckle cusp tip ever so slightly though all right let's see how this looks now I'm gonna shift it over absolutely no interference whatsoever I don't feel any interruptions in that transition the incisal edges are touching and the balancing side is there, okay? So, <clears throat> quite simple. You wanna do it on the reverse now. You're gonna lock your centric latch on the side that you had opened. Open this one, unlock it, and then you do the reverse, okay? I'm gonna do this off camera and uh, just to shorten up the uh, time of the video a little bit and then we'll come back and I'll show you the protrusive record. And that'll be the final stage of our occlusal equilibration.